Dozens of Jews in New York City set out on a cold Sunday morning to make history. It was March 15th, 1896. 63 men gathered inside the Lexington Avenue Opera House. They hoped to fight back against the wave of anti-Semitism rising throughout the United States. The group formed the Hebrew Union Veterans Association, the HUVA. At that meeting, they also decided to hold a memorial service in May to honor their fallen Jewish comrades from the Civil War. JWV continues to hold services on what is now Memorial Day for Jews who died serving our country. The Spanish-American War produced its own group of Jewish veterans. These men organized themselves into the Junior Hebrew War Veterans, but just a few weeks after organizing, changed their name to the Hebrew Veterans of the War with Spain. Both groups fought against anti-Semitism and discrimination in New York City and the New York State National Guard. In 1913, the groups appealed to President William Howard Taft when soldiers were denied leave for Yom Kippur. This led to Taft reversing that discriminatory order from the secretaries of the Army and Navy. By the start of World War I, the ranks of the Hebrew War veterans had started to decline considerably, and those who remained merged with the Hebrew veterans of the war with Spain. After World War I, the younger generation of veterans tried to start their own organization. Realizing a merger was inevitable, the Hebrew veterans of the war with Spain changed their name to the Hebrew veterans of the wars of the Republic. They immediately got to work holding a parade, and then a massive meeting in May of 1919 at Madison Square Garden. This event protested the treatment of Jews in Poland. In November, the two groups called for a Jewish day of mourning in America over the pogroms in Ukraine. At this time, however, these veteran groups were still largely focused on membership in the northeastern parts of the United States, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. After two years of existing side by side, 1920 saw the Hebrew veterans of the Wars of the Republic as the organization for all Jewish veterans. In 1922, the organization became the Jewish Veterans of the Wars of the Republic, and then officially adopted its modern name, the Jewish War Veterans of the USA, in 1929. This marked the start of JWV as a truly national organization. Between 1930 and 1939, JWV grew from just 30 posts to 277. In 1927, JWV fought for legislation to ensure graves of Jewish service members who died in World War I in France were marked with a Star of David. When Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of Germany in January of 1933, just one American voice spoke out against him, the Jewish war veterans. Within six weeks, JWV called for a boycott of German goods. JWV organized a parade of more than 4,000 veterans in New York City on March 23, 1933. The parade ended at City Hall, where the mayor publicly endorsed the boycott and called for diplomatic protests of German cruelty by the Roosevelt administration. According to past National Commander Abraham Kraditer, for several months, our organization was the only one which advocated this peaceful weapon against the disturber of world peace. Kraditer added that, most other organizations severely criticized and condemned the JWV for advocating the boycott. JWV also strongly advocated for a U.S. boycott of the 1936 Berlin Olympics. From the time the United States entered World War II in December of 1941 until August of 1945, the Jewish war veterans went all out in support of the war effort. The National Executive Committee held a meeting on December 18, 1941, it created an emergency program for victory. This called for civilian defense activities, nursing aid, youth activities, fundraising drives, and much more. A fundraising campaign helped raise enough money for JWV to purchase six fighter planes for the military. Each cost $200,000. The first was named the Star of David. JWV also purchased 25 ambulances and several field kitchens. Another program sent playing cards and other entertainment items to military personnel. At the request of JWV, the Department of the Navy even commissioned several ships which were named after Jewish naval heroes, including the USS Uriah Levy. The organization also established the Adopt-A-Yank program. Many other organizations copied this idea, in which people adopted service members and sent them boxes of comfort items throughout the war. 
The United States Treasury Department commended JWV for selling more than $200 million worth of war bonds. During the war, the JWV's National Executive Committee also announced plans to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for the influx in new members it anticipated after the fighting ceased. Hiring a professional staff for the first time in the organization's history was part of this expansion plan. Between 1943 and 1945, JWV organized 118 new posts and doubled its number of paid members. When the American Legion announced its GI Bill of Rights, JWV was one of the first organizations to support the legislation. Behind the scenes, JWV was the most effective VSO in its work with members of Congress on the legislation. JWV is credited with starting the first letter writing campaign, which proved so successful, the GI Bill passed in the next two months, by June of 1944. The American Legion said JWV's greatest contribution to the GI Bill was its aggressive push for racial and religious protections. JWV stood out from many veteran organizations for its strong opinions about the equality of black Americans who had fought alongside them. American Jews still had to deal with strong anti-Semitism, but felt it did not compare to the prejudice faced by blacks in the United States and were disturbed that black veterans returned to the same ignorance and abuse as they had experienced before the war. The Jewish war veterans joined with prominent black leaders in the fight for civil rights. It is the only VSO known to have participated in the March on Washington with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. JWV was also alone for quite some time in speaking out on behalf of the Japanese American community's efforts to seek redress for internment during the war. After the war, the federal government started the Department of Veterans Affairs Voluntary Service. The goal was to have volunteers who would provide for the nation's veterans while they were in VA healthcare facilities. JWV was one of the first organizations certified to sit on the National VAVS Committee upon its creation in 1946. This is still a program JWV is proud to participate in. On April 4th, 1948, the Jewish war veterans organized the largest parade to date in Jewish history. They gathered 250,000 veterans and 90 marching bands in New York City to show support for a Jewish state of Israel. When five Arab countries invaded Israel in 1948, JWV asked its members for donations to the new Israeli army and ended up shipping more than one million uniforms. As it had in the 1940s, JWV mobilized itself when the Korean conflict started in the 1950s. At the time the war started, there were no reserves of blood for either the military or civilian population. But JWV pledged to fix this shortage as its special wartime project. William Levin, chairman of the JWV National Blood Donor Committee, sent out an urgent request to posts across the country. He asked each post to pledge an annual donation of three pints per member. The Post reached this goal by 1951. The organization is credited with donating the first 100 pints of blood sent to Korea. JWV sponsored National Baseball Blood Month in 1952. It coordinated blood drives at ballparks in 53 cities, along with the American Red Cross. During the war, JWV also had speakers travel the country to support the war effort, purchasing savings bonds and post-sent gift packages to troops overseas. In 1955, JWV officially moved its headquarters from New York City to Washington, D.C. That's also when the campaign started to establish the Shrine to Jewish War Dead, which received a congressional charter signed by President Eisenhower. The honorary chairman of the campaign to raise money for the shrine was General Omar Bradley. The National Shrine to Jewish War Dead is known today as the National Museum of American Jewish Military History. Early on, JWV supported the Vietnam War, the organization sponsored a series of educational programs to garner support and understanding from the home front for the troops as anti-Vietnam sentiment started to grow. JWV members sent packages to our troops and allies, including medication for the Vietnamese people. But by 1971, JWV became the first veteran service organization to urge the U.S. government to bring the troops home from Southeast Asia. Its members passed a resolution calling for the end of the war in Vietnam. After the war, JWV urged the government to pressure Vietnam and Laos to help find those who were prisoners of war or missing in action. This continues to be a priority that national commanders speak about each year during their testimony before the House and Senate Veterans Affairs Committees. 
1984, the Jewish war veterans received a congressional charter. That same year, JWV and the National Shrine to Jewish War Dead moved to its current home on R Street in Northwest DC. Vice President George H.W. Bush presided over the dedication ceremony for the building and helped nail a mezuzah in the doorway. In 1989, JWV started its annual Allied Mission Trip to Israel. This program brings members and other top leaders from American veteran organizations to Israel. The meetings with government figures and military officials help provide non-Jewish veterans with an insight into Israel's unique security threats and its important relationship with the United States. During the Gulf War, the Department of Defense approved JWV's request to set up a command post in the Pentagon. Members who were retired field officers with prior military duty at the Pentagon manned the desk. It served as a clearing center to address problems or respond to inquiries for Jewish military personnel. JWV also sponsored the publication and shipment of 1,000 prayer books to Jewish troops in Saudi Arabia. The events of September 11th led to wars in both Afghanistan and Iraq. The Jewish war veterans again stepped up to support the troops deployed to these battle zones. Hosts sent care packages overseas, and the organization's national leadership spent time visiting wounded troops at Walter Reed Medical Center in Washington, D.C. Over the years, JWV has been at the forefront of many court cases, including ones at the U.S. Supreme Court level involving veterans and service personnel. Since the 1980s, it has advocated that war memorial crosses on federal land and supported by federal funds violated the separation of church and state and diminishes the sacrifice of Jewish veterans. In recent years, JWV has advocated on behalf of both transgender and DACA veterans and service personnel. The Jewish war veterans pushed the federal government to ensure anti-Semitism did not prevent any deserving Jewish members of the military from receiving their commendations. Thanks to JWV efforts, the Defense Authorization Bill for fiscal year 2002 contains Section 552, a review regarding award of Medal of Honor to certain Jewish Americans and Hispanic American war veterans. In 1986, JWV discovered that Tibor Rubin, a Korean war veteran, did not receive numerous medals due to anti-Semitism. That kicked off a more than 20-year quest to fix that injustice. JWV lobbied members of Congress, collected thousands of signatures on petitions, interviewed survivors who were with him in a POW camp, and those who fought alongside him. In 2005, Rubin became the first Holocaust survivor to receive the Medal of Honor. JWV member Erwin Burtnick worked with the family of William Shemin for five years to ensure he received a Medal of Honor for his heroic actions in World War I. President Barack Obama presented that medal to Shemin's family in 2015. 125 years later, the 63 men who met in New York City might still recognize the organization they started. JWV members continue to tell stories about their military experiences to make sure everyone knows about the hundreds of thousands of Jews who have served honorably. Members still stand up against anti-Semitism wherever and whenever it occurs. Fallen comrades are honored with flags placed at their graves each Memorial and Veterans Day. The Jewish war veterans of the United States is still serving the men and women who served our country. And as it has been since the beginning, the latest generation of veterans and active duty personnel are stepping up to do their part to continue this 125 year legacy.